Hi guys and happy Friday. I am going to talk to you today about mindfulness. So um, if you're watching this, you can certainly use mindfulness for weight loss, and that is um, the course that I'm talking about this week. But mindfulness also helps with lots of other things too, like depression, anxiety, stress, and lots of other things. So um, the way that mindfulness and yoga apply to weight loss is that we're often mindless. A lot of times, uh, many of us throughout the day are mindless. And when I usually start, so I have a chapter in my self-help course called Yoga and Mindfulness for Weight Loss. And people initially think that yoga is for calories, you know, to burn calories, which it is, and it, and it will help. Um, but that is not the reason why. So first, I'm going to talk to you about mindfulness, and then I'll tell you why yoga is a good uh, part of that in a way to practice that. So um, for for uh, mindfulness, one of the things that we tend to get caught up in in the day is a tape. We all have tapes that play throughout the day. Um, so we might have a tape that says, other people are more disciplined than I am. I'm just not that disciplined of a person. I guess I just don't, I'm not very strong-willed. I guess I'm just Maybe I'll always be fat. Maybe I'll always be overweight. Maybe I'll just always have a problem with food. Um, maybe we even have an external locus of control where we blame it on others. We blame it on other people for why we are overweight. Well, if he wouldn't have done this to me, then I wouldn't be eating like this. If she wouldn't have broken up with me, then I wouldn't have such an addiction with food. And that is where mindlessness gets us into a lot of trouble. So the goal of, the goal of mindfulness is to look at those unhelpful tapes that play in our head and be able to stop them and create a different narrative about those tapes that are going on in our head. So for instance, if we've got these unhelpful narratives about ourselves, and they're playing throughout the day, they become subconscious so much so that we don't realize that we have these narratives going anymore. And we're sort of uh, becoming automated and just reacting to what we're telling ourselves in our head. So um, the idea with mindfulness is to be able to take a step back and look at that harmful narrative and say, wait a minute, is that really true? Is that really true for me? Byron Katie, um, she writes a book and her whole, her whole premise about this is that in the absence of our stories, we have peace. We are at peace without our stories. It's our stories, our untrue stories that cause us the suffering. And so with weight loss and with learning how to detach from food, we have to look at those unhelpful stories that we have and start to change them. And the only way that we can change those stories is by one, identifying the fact that we even have those stories going on. So what I want you to do today is as I'm talking, I want you to just sit for a minute and think about what narratives play in your head on a daily basis. Um, maybe it's food addiction that you're struggling with. Uh, maybe it's, um, maybe it's substance abuse. Maybe it's depression. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's stress. Maybe it's a, a troubled relationship. I want you to think about what narratives possibly play in your head throughout the day over and over and over. Maybe it's, um, I'm not good enough. Maybe it's, I'm not worthy of people being nice to me or treating me well. Maybe it's, I'm not worthy of putting good things in my body. Uh, maybe it's, um, I just don't have that good of discipline. Uh, maybe it's that, Life is so hard. Maybe I should just get this one thing. Uh, I work so hard. This is the one thing, the one treat that I get. So whatever that narrative is, and you can have multiple narratives. I want you to think about those things and you can write them down or you can just sort of hold them close to yourself. And then what I want you to do is I want you to replace it with another plausible, plausible narrative. Right. So this might be one that you don't necessarily believe right away, but another story that could be true. So if my narrative is that, uh, you know, I work so hard that at the end of the day, I should be able to eat whatever I want, whenever I want. That's my one thing. You know, I don't drink. I don't smoke. Um, you know, I don't cuss. But food is my thing. OK, so that's your one thing that you get. What are you getting out of that? 
What are you getting out of that long term? Hypertension, diabetes, self-loathing, isolation. Is that what you want to reward yourself with? So you have to look at it and take a step back and say, what am I really, really getting from this thing? You know, um, alcoholics will say, oh, I just have a couple drinks at the end of the day. And that's what and that's, you know, I, I, I deserve that. And I'm functioning and I, you know, I, I get this. But the problem is long term, you drink long enough. You're going to get cirrhosis. You're going to get fatty liver disease. You're going to get heart problems, memory loss, Alzheimer's. So are we really rewarding ourselves by excess? And so that's what I'm, what I'm talking about here is being able to change that to a more helpful narrative about how we carry ourselves. Um, the idea, if we carry a narrative of, you know what, I'm just not that disciplined, but other people must be more disciplined than me that lose weight. Well, okay. Is that really true? Is that really true? Or have I just not given myself enough of a shot yet? Have I not been equipped with the right tools that maybe other people had been equipped with? And maybe that's the reason why I haven't been successful up to this point. Maybe it's just a matter of me finding the right tools at schoolofselfhelp.com to help myself, to be able to, to change those unhelpful narratives. Okay. So we have to curate our thoughts the way that we pick out our clothes at the beginning of the day. And we have to be really, really good bouncers of those unhelpful thoughts that poison us and create all the wrong behaviors. So this, this is where mindfulness really, really helps you. If your problem is not food addiction, if your problem is not overeating, but maybe it's stress or depression or anxiety, mindfulness can help you because the idea is that we are not our thoughts. So the difference is I can say I am anxious or I feel anxious. Those are two very different things, right? The first one connotes that I am anxiety. And what does that mean? That I'm just this ball of frenetic energy all day? If I feel anxious, that's a different thing, right? Because that is, that's temporary. I feel anxious. Okay, I feel anxious. That's fine. I feel anxious. This too shall go away. And so being able to look at our moods, the way that we feel in the present moment and going, wow, look at my mind right now. It's really, really racing. Look at how much anxiety I have right now. And I don't have to do anything as a result of that. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to drink. I don't have to eat. I don't have to smoke. I don't have to gamble or whatever my poison is. I can just sit here with that anxiety and go, huh, isn't that interesting? I feel anxious right now. What's that about? Oh, well, I have a meeting coming up in two hours that's anxiety provoking, or I just had a really anxiety provoking talk with my boss, whatever that is, right? So being able to sit with that stuff. And John Kabat-Zinn, who is one of the sort of uh, iconic, foremost researchers, thought leaders in the field of anxiety and depression and mindfulness, says that when we resist our anxiety and depression, when we resist our feelings, that is the quicksand by which they are reinforced. So it is in the acceptance or the mindfulness of those feelings that lessens it. It lessens its effects on us. And to give you one more example, if you think of water coming through, if you've ever seen a dam coming through, a dam and water creates a tremendous amount of energy, right? You can, you can harness a tremendous amount of energy from a dam being forced into a water. But when you open the dam, when you have acceptance and you open, the water loses its strength. There is no more energy. There is no more power. There is no more resistance. And so we can do that with our same feelings. Through mindfulness, we can be accepting and open to our feelings. And they no longer hold the same power over us. So um, I, I use the term mindfulness and yoga interchangeably because I, I think that Yoga is a good way to psychically and physically manifest that psychic energy that is no longer serving us. Um, so you can do a simple Google search for poses for anxiety or poses for depression. Um, if you're having a problem with food addiction and you feel like you are overeating, I really, really strongly recommend that you just try to incorporate three to five 
yoga poses in your day. And these poses really, really help us to practice mindfulness because number one, we can't do anything else when we're turned upside down. Um, but number two, it really sort of symbolizes to us that we're taking a moment out to be present. We're anchoring ourselves to the present moment. We're not typing on a computer. We're not texting. We're not Facebooking. We're just being very, very present in that moment. And so um, if you guys are struggling with any sort of addiction, uh, food addiction is, of course, the one that I'm talking about today, try uh, to just practice simple mindfulness for three to five minutes of just sitting with the emotion and seeing where it is, seeing where it manifests in your body. It might be a tightness in your chest. It might be butterflies in your stomach. It might be a ball in your throat. And then that's okay. Just sitting with that and watching how it passes. Um, our anxiety, our stress, our depression all tends to ebb and flow. And the last analogy I'll give you, and I'm sorry, I love analogies, but, um, if you remember the old telephone booths, that is how mindfulness is to our feelings. So if you are in a telephone booth and it is raining outside, you can be in the rain without getting wet. So when you're in the telephone booth, you are in the rain, but you're not getting wet. And that is what you need to do with mindfulness. You can be in the anxiety without getting anxious. Okay, so I hope that helps, guys. If you want to check out any of my courses, head to schoolofselfhelp.com, um, and you can sign up for any of the ones that I have out of the matrix for substance abuse, uh, full from within for food addiction, and um, and then a relationship detox for relationships. So thanks, guys, and have a great weekend, and happy Friday.